So that brings us to generosity. We're talking about generosity uh, this month as a church. Yes. And we know that generosity is more than just treasure. It's talent. It's time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When I think about Black History Month and I think about black people, I can't really go more than a minute no. before getting to the topic of generosity. Come on, somebody. So let me just open it up to you Talk all. How, how do you all see generosity and blackness this month? Mm. Mm. That's a, this is generosity. Mm -hmm. Ooh. What we're doing right now is generosity. Um, the fact that we even feel like we have to educate. Mm -hmm. um, educate the church on who we are and why we are the way we are and why we give the way we give, and why we do what we do um, is generosity because we don't have to do it. I mean, we didn't ask to be over here, but we're giving you the <laughs> opportunity to listen to our story. Come on. Um, and to experience our culture, to, experience, to, to let you know what makes us us, what gets us up in the morning, um, to share the gifts that God has given us with the world and not just our people. I can't think more than five minutes without Really, you know, in my mind, thinking of all the generous black, you know, grandmas in my life and mm. people who have, I think black folks are some of the most generous people on the planet. Yeah. Um, and the way we compliment, <laughs> the way we affirm. Yeah. Um, you said earlier, we, we celebrate because we, we have to celebrate ourselves because we ha haven't always been celebrated. And yeah. I think when you've, when you know what it feels like to not mm. be celebrated, to not be valued, yeah. you go the extra mile, you mm. know, and I think we are so... Um, and so when I think about that, I think about, um, I just have this desire in me to want to, um, to want to bless, you know, the black owned businesses that I know of in my life. I think that, um, you know, there's statistics have shown that there is a, a failure rate that doesn't always exist, um, in other cultures that in our culture, we don't always thrive because we don't always have the support and the resources. So mm -hmm. when I think about generosity, um, I just... My heart is tender because I know so many, I can think of so many black owned business off the top of my, my head right now who are giving so much of their time and talent. Um, and I think of my father who, um, you know, is a jazz musician. And he, you know, back in the day, played with Miles Davis. My father, <laughs> to me, we were just talking about, we have to oh, celebrate our, we have to yeah, celebrate, celebrate, we have to talk ahead, about it. Because my father, like, when I tell you this, man, he does it for the love. Like, I don't think he's gotten his due. Yeah. I'm like, like, but he shows up to his mm. art and gives it 5,000%. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. All he has. Love it. And, you know, for times, and he's a business, don't get me wrong, he, he knows his business, but he's just so generous with mm. his time and his talents. And so um, I think about him, I think about, you know, my grandmother, who was just so welcoming to anybody I brought in the house. Yeah. Um, and it just, again, it makes my heart tender to think about how generous our people yeah. have been yeah, under yeah. some very painful circumstances yeah. Yeah. and in light of some very painful history. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it's supernatural. Yeah. <laughs> it's like only God. Yeah. Um, and our faith is really an anchor for us. Yeah. Our faith That's right. is like... Man, because God has given so much to us yeah. in the midst of in the midst of pain. Um, yeah. We just it's the overflow. Yeah. We we live out of an overflow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I could talk about that for. And hours. then even if, to piggyback, um, how your family again. I was I was raised as an only child. Yeah. You know, so I was raised off the back of a of a of a black woman, strong black woman who's a retired Chicago police officer who mm -hmm. who almost died. Well, 10 years ago in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. mm. No, well, actually 15 years ago. Mm. Um, as, a, as a school resource officer as, with the Chicago Police Department, chasing after a guy, chasing after a student who knew her, he took off. And she holding onto his jacket and falling over and all she sees is red. And she gets rushed to the hospital and is on the ice bed and in the hospital for 10 days. Mm. Um, and losing, to give back. Yeah, losing 50% <laughs> of her blood which you shouldn't survive from. No. Yeah. So um, that's what generosity is. And it goes back to work. <laughs> it goes back to work to serve and to show me, you know what hardships happen. Yep. Life is not always going to throw you the best cards. Yeah. But that doesn't stop you, you know? 
I'm still going to go out and protect and serve yeah. because I need to show you as my only child yeah. and as a boy raised without a father hmm. that I'm just as strong as your father yeah. was. She's modeling something for you even exactly. in that. Yeah, I like wow. that. I wonder Everybody. if generous, the generous life yeah. is more than a moment, mm. but it is something that is a lifetime of learning. Mm. Uh, in a moment, Thomas is going to round the around the conversation for us. But I would say for me, generosity was always personal. Mm. Mm. There was always room for someone else at the table. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When we didn't really have anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I love earlier Sharon said that, you know, we, we always give from an overflow. And I was laughing, thinking to myself, with, I was the oldest out of six. There wasn't a lot of overflow. <laughs> right. But somehow right. or another, my mom made, made another spot my, you'd always for sleep. other people always. to come. Uh -huh. I'm like, hey, this is food for us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We don't need generosity this Sunday. But yet somebody <laughs> would show up and it's there. At, our, at our house. Um, I saw generosity from my dad. Uh, I grew up in the 80s and 90s mm. when the crack epidemic really ravaged our community mm -hmm. and, our, and, and much of my extended family. So I saw firsthand uh, what can happen in inner city environments when hope mm. gets up and takes a break. Mm. I would watch my dad. My dad would never give money. He always would give food yeah. and time. Yeah. There were times where I was with my dad where we would walk over to the Burger King and he would get a meal for the person who was asking for money, for money yep. to get drugs, yeah. to actually ease part of the pain that they had been in. Right. Um, but my dad, I watched my dad serve others. We could go on and on yes. about the generosity, but here's what I want people to hear. When we talk about generosity and the aim of generosity, we don't talk about it from the standpoint of the benefit is our family and our church. When we talked about generosity in our house, it was always about we all eat. Yes. White people eat. Yes. Latin people eat. Asian people eat. Yes. We actually are doing this not for the benefit of our community. Yes. We're doing this actually because everybody yeah. has worth. Everybody matters to yeah. God. Yeah. And I think that's something I've carried. Ooh. Oh, I love it. I yeah, you know, and, and, and I echo a lot of that. So for me, I had two quick stories and then we'll, we'll round the conversation. I think of my mom, and I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Mm. Mm. I got saved in high school and my mom got saved a little later. Mm. Um, but I, I think of my mom and my grandmother who, like you, Ed, anybody was welcome. We didn't have much. Yes, so if, if right. tonight we having a mayonnaise sandwich, I know about that. Like, yes. See if you know about yes. the mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> and someone needed something, we got a knock on the door or that buzzer rang and we had a bunch of people in the community who experienced homelessness who would do little odds and end jobs for us so we could help them out. You getting yours sliced a little bit and giving. And, and when, as a child, I remember being a little upset sometimes. Yeah. Whatever I had, like, why I gotta share? Right. Why I gotta give? And my mom and my grandmother always, because, because their need is actually greater than ours. And I, I never realized that. We yeah. always have room for someone else. Yeah. Watching my mom walk, work multiple jobs. She couldn't work full time yeah. because she had um, some health issues. So she had multiple little part time, just busting her butt or my dad, busting his butt. And then we'd be able to bless all the people in our community. My grandmother continually doing things. And then, so I saw that from a personal standpoint. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when I got saved and I got into church, I watched my pastor, Kojic Church, right? Yes. Watched my pastor do a very similar thing. I would watch him. I was what's called an armor bearer, so I was like a right hand to the pastor. Oh, yep. yeah. I would watch him <laughs> get his money, take out the armor bearers or take out the band or take out whoever and pay for the dinner, pay for cats getting home, mm. pay people for serving, and go home with nothing. That's deep. Mm. And we'd be on a train in the Bronx going home, and I would be thinking 16, 17, 18 going, how are you going to pay your bills? Yeah. And God would just, he, would, he just knew God was gonna provide. Mm. I said, why do you give like this? Mm. And he said, because God will provides all I need. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't foolishness that he wasn't, you know, he didn't balance his books, he didn't care about it. There was wisdom there, but he understood what the Lord's given me. Listen, this is for me to bless other people. Yeah. So, so my generosity kind of developed wow. between those two things. And when I got married, it's funny. So I got married and my wife is first generation Guatemalan. 
we were driving somewhere. We stopped at a McDonald's in Jersey. And it was like all these Latin people in there. <laughs> and her and I walked in and it was quiet. No one spoke to us. And I looked at my wife and I said, now watch when I go to the bathroom. I bet you they talk to you. I went to the bathroom. Everybody started speaking to her in Spanish. I said, because culturally, mm -hmm. most cultures stick together. Not always negative. There's reasons for that. That's right. I was like, but what you'll find, because when she didn't experience my family and black people, yeah. always warm, always receptive. Oh, I said, we're going to talk about you. We're going to straighten you out. You know how we do. We roast you. We're going to roast you. I said, but we always going to say, why? Because we have just, and, and not that black people are monolithic, but there's a lot of similarities. Okay. Yeah. We have learned to accept everybody. Mm. Yes. It, is, it is innate in us because of our faith, That's I think, it. this traditions of growing up, even if you're not a believer, that we, we just make room for you. Yeah. Yeah. Make room. Yeah. You, you might look a little strange to me, yeah. but there's a seat at the table for you. That's my mom. Too. That, right? See. Your family. The serious, Your my family. mom. Seriously. And then my mom would do that with her. Yeah. First time she met my wife. That's what you wear in the church, baby? Oh, okay. We'll sit down and get you some food. <laughs> 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 Kindness, generosity, and, and cut you at the same. I mean, that's what. Yep. And Truth. So, right? <laughs> and so I learned that just that, listen, I'm going to give and I'm going to be generous, not as a way to show people I got it, mm. not as a way to flaunt anything. Mm but a way to just say, this is just because God has blessed me. That's yeah, right. that's good. Whether I had a lot or a little, you're gonna have what I have. Yeah. Exactly.